In this video, we're going to talk about Bactrim, also known as co-trimoxazole. Bactrim is a fixed dose combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole in a 1 to 5 ratio. Together, they provide synergistic bactericidal activity by sequential inhibition of folate metabolism, enhancing antimicrobial um, efficacy while limiting resistance. Bactrim is available in oral and intravenous forms. Let's look at the mechanism of action. The sulfamethoxazole inhibits dihydropteroate synthase, which therefore blocks the conversion of something called PABA, para-aminobenzoic acid, to dihydropteroate. What this means downstream is that nucleotides are not produced efficiently for bacterial survival. The trimethoprim inhibits dihydrofolate reductase. Blocking this, therefore, blocks conversion of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. And so the result is that the sequential inhibition of these two enzymes really inhibit folate synthesis and so disruption of DNA and RNA synthesis. And this will cause bactericidal effects due to the combination effect. Individually, they are bacteriostatic, but together they are bactericidal. The synergy enhances spectrum and potency. Combination achieves broad coverage with reduced minimum inhibitory concentration compared to just monotherapy. So the spectrum of activity. Bactrim has broad spectrum coverage. They're good against gram-positive Staphylococcus aureus, including MRSA, Streptococcus pneumoniae, gram-negative, including E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Haemophilus influenza, and Nocardia, as well as fungal and protozoan uh, microbes, including Pneumocystisera vici, Toxoplasma gondii. They have poor coverage, however, against bacteria, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Enterococcus, most anaerobes, and Mycoplasma and Chlamydia. And so the clinical indication for Bactrim typically include UTIs, prostatitis, acute cystitis, Pneumocystis urovici pneumoniae, both for treatment and prophylaxis, so PJP. Nocardiosis from nocardia, cyclosporiasis, and purulent skin infections. Let's look at the pharmacokinetics of Bactrim. So the oral bioavailability is about 85 to 100%. This means when taken by mouth, almost all the drug gets absorbed into the bloodstream. That's very high compared to many drugs, meaning oral dosing is actually effective. The distribution of Bactrim is wide as it achieves therapeutic levels in urine, prostate, lungs, and cerebrospinal fluid. After absorption, the drug spreads throughout the body and it reaches effective concentrations in many important tissues, including those I mentioned, urinary tract, prostate, lungs, and even the cerebrospinal fluid. The half-life of Bactrim is about 10 hours. It is much more prolonged in renal dysfunction. This basically means how long it takes for half the drug to be cleared from the body. Excretion is essentially through the kidneys both unchanged and metabolites. Most of the drugs actually leave the body through the kidneys in urine, partly as the original drug and partly as breakdown products. There is no adjustments in Bactrim dose with hepatic impairment. Renal dose adjustment, however, is essential, especially in elderly or in prolonged use, because remember Bactrim is cleared by the kidneys. So what about resistance to Bactrim? Well, this can happen through a number of ways. Firstly, mutation or overproduction of dihydrofolate reductase or dihydropteroate synthase. 
There can also be plasmid mediated resistance, especially in E. coli. Resistance is increasing, and particularly with uropathogens, so urinary um, bacteria. We do not typically use empirically Bactrim for UTIs in areas where E. coli resistance is greater than 20%. The adverse effects of Bactrim, like many antibiotics, include standard gut upset, a rash, photosensitivity, hyperkalemia, important adverse reaction to Bactrim, as well as increased creatinine without a drop in GFR. This is because trimethoprim competes for tubular secretion of creatinine, therefore less secretion of creatinine. Trimethoprim blocks distal tubular secretion of potassium, which leads to the hyperkalemia I mentioned. Some serious and rare side effects include Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, but these are very severe skin reactions from a drug allergy. Other serious and rare uh, side effects include aplastic anemia, agranulocytosis, hemolytic anemia, especially in G6PD deficiency, crystal urea, interstitial nephritis, and hepatotoxicity. It's really important to monitor potassium and renal function in elderly or those on ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers or spironolactone because there is some worrisome association with sudden death, presumably due to cardiac dysarrhythmias, because when taking Bactrim, as mentioned, some people are much more sensitive, especially with these drugs, and they can cause quite significant hyperkalemia, leading to possible dysarrhythmias. So what are some contraindications and cautions then? Well, contraindication for one, pregnancy, especially in the first trimester. Bactrim is not allowed. And this is because it inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, it's an antifolate and therefore teratogenic. It's contraindicated in G6PD deficiency as well as severe liver or renal disease, and those with sulfur allergy. Caution needs to be taken when studying Bactrim, especially in the elderly and those on nephrotoxic or potassium-sparing diuretics. Drug interactions to note. With warfarin, it can increase INR. With ACE inhibitors and ARBs, potassium-sparing diuretics, it can increase the risk of hyperkalemia. And obviously taking Bactrim in those with methotrexate, it can increase the risk of myelosuppression. Because of the additive effects, methotrexate inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, as so does trimethoprim. Finally, sulfamethoxazole in Bactrim is structurally different from non-antimicrobial sulfanamides, such as sulfonylurea, diuretics, and celebrex. Therefore, there is minimal concern for a hypersensitivity reaction to these medications if someone had a history of a reaction to Bactrim or other sulfonamide antibiotics, including Dapsone. So in summary, we talked about Bactrim, which is trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole in a 1 to 5 ratio. Together, they provide a synergistic bactericidal activity, so killing the bacteria. Thank you for watching.